one. Today, we are extremely privileged to have with us Colonel Parikshit Mehra, Sena Medal, an Army officer and tunnel expert. With a wide range of experience in numerous fields, Colonel Mehra in his career has served in both desert and mountainous terrains, including being posted to the Siachen Glacier. He is an expert in nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare, and has been involved in many infrastructure works in Sikkim, including, but not limited to, the Indochina border roads in high altitude areas. Colonel Mehra has also commanded a road construction company of border roads organization in Bhutan, tasked to maintain and upgrade Asian Highway 42. He has recently been nominated on the panel of experts for tunnel-related matters by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you for taking out time for your busy schedule to be here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Starting off, sir, you acquired your B.Tech in civil engineering from DDIT Gujarat and then went on to pass out from the Indian Military Academy in 2004. Despite being a qualified engineer, you chose to join the army. What encouraged you to make this decision rather than pursuing engineering in the civil? Honestly speaking, you know, when I had joined, I was already about to enter into a master's program. Uh, but serendipity and the fact that I am uh, an army officer's son. So that was probably, you know, one of the reasons that uh, once I got through you know, I had my, my family wanted me to join as well. And uh, being from an army background, I, I feel comfortable in here. And yes, I did also have an inkling that, that a lot of technology is now coming in the army. And it does give engineers a lot of leeway to, to, to work their way through and, and to be able to educate themselves along the way while having a military career. So that was it. Yeah. A bit of both my family background and knowing that I will get engineering opportunities within Army as well. Okay, that was interesting. You were also the project director of the Rohatang Tunnel Project, which is one of the longest tunnels today, and have been awarded the Sena Medal for Extraordinary Contribution. What was it like to be part of it, and what challenges did you face? See, uh, uh, I was fortunate enough uh, that uh, once I moved out of Bhutan, I went for a master's program at IIT in Delhi, which was about tunneling, which was about rock mechanics and underground structures. And then they did post me to Rotang Tunnel. So I did a tenure there, came back to Border Roads Organization headquarter as a joint director and went back to Rotang again. So I've seen the tunnel for five years, where I've seen it, you know, in one of the poorest geologies, you know, I have seen it, uh, seen the two ends meet, the breakthrough of the tunnel. Subsequently, when I was joint director tunnels, I was monitoring the progress of this tunnel for the organization. So I, I was aware of what was happening in the, in the time between the breakthrough and the completion activities. And then I went back again for the last one and a half years where the electromechanical systems, the ventilation, lighting, and all those systems were being, uh, uh, you know, were being installed on the, on the tunnel. So it gave me a holistic uh, uh, exposure to tunnels, which is rare happening in an organization like ours, where we get to spend so much of time on a project. So I was able to see this project for, for a complete of five years. And that probably, you know, thanks to the organization has, has given me a well-rounded exposure to tunneling today. And uh, probably, as you said, that's, that's one of the reasons today I, I'm part of uh, many expert committees you know, also part of the formulation of codes for tunnels for, for the country. It's, it's, it's thanks to the organization and to this exposure. So for me, this was, this was very enriching, very enriching, you know, and I uh, only have to thank the organization for it. Yes, sir. So I came to know that Sela Tunnel in Arunachal Pradesh is your most recent project. What is the difference in the construction of the Rohatang Tunnel and the Sera Tunnel as they're in the Western and Eastern Himalayas, respectively? See, uh, we must realize that uh, over the past few decades, we haven't given as much attention to the Northeast as we should have, probably. Uh, reasons are many, but uh, because of the fact that the roads leading up to Sela themselves are not in very great condition, for area there are a lot of landslides 
a lot of issues for us to be able to pump in stores to Sela. Plus, the Sela tunnel itself is at more than 13,000 feet. So, Rotan was 10,000, connected to Chandigarh through a highway, which was, which was respectably good. You know, but here to pump in resources and to get people in at 13,000 feet, make them work at 13,000 feet continuously is, is a challenge. So though this tunnel is smaller, but as far as uh, the challenges of topography, challenges of logistics, challenges of health uh, and continued deployment of people, they're much more. They're much more. So it's, it's, it's different. It's very different in that way. And uh, I would say that though a shorter channel, the tunnel, say like, is more challenging for for construction when compared to land. Yes, so thirteen thousand feet above sea level is a lot. You also mentioned that you're an alumni of IIT Delhi, from where you did your MTech in rock engineering and underground structures, as well as specialization in NATM from Technical University Graz in Austria, and are one of the very few to have done the latter. What is the difference in the teaching methods of both places? See, honestly, uh, uh, the good thing about the IIT course, two years of pure theory and good theory, and they teach you well. And, and you know, that's how we are Indians. You know, we, we get into the nuts and bolts mathematics of everything. So it was very good that way. However, what the, the difference in the course in Austria was that the professors who were teaching us, the people who were teaching us were tunnel practitioners themselves, you know. So that was more oriented towards site practice. That course was just five modules of a month each. And uh, what they taught us was much more relevant probably to a practical tunneling engineer than what I learned in two years at the IIT. The difference being that the professors or the people instructing there come from the industry, you know, or they have been part of the industry. Unlike our system where our professors have generally been students and then, you know, got a doctorate and, and, and who stuck to the university. So, so the practical touch is slightly on the lesser side. You know, that is something I am sure that we, we will improve over the years now. So, yes, between the two courses, uh, only thing was that the professors there in, in Austria were uh, in touch with the industry. And when they taught us, uh, finally, they taught us also how to apply it to the site you know, which is uh, the essence of education in the end, you know, we must be able to bridge that gap between the book and uh, the site. That's what engineers are for. So uh, very effective course there in, there in Austria. But yes, I, I also have to thank IIT for having given me an excellent theoretical background. It makes it easier for us to comprehend things, uh, you know, when we do courses later. So, so there, were, there were pros and cons of both. But uh, yes, for, for today, for our kind of economy, our kind of country, we need more courses like the ones we have in Austria, which are more oriented towards site and practice so that we can take our developmental projects ahead. Yes, a well-rounded approach towards everything that we do. You have recently been nominated on the panel of experts for tunnel-related matters by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. What will be the role of this committee and how will it help in the construction of tunnels in the country? See, what is happening within the uh, country today is that there are a lot of organizations, organizations like Waterloo's organization, NHAI, NHIDCA, some state organizations who are making tunnels of their own through their own funding. But what happens when so many organizations are working for tunneling projects, there is, there is no one to, to, to set the theme. You know, to get some kind of a uniformity in the designs and uniformity in the cross sections of the tunnels so that we can optimize in the economy. You know, today, if I make a tunnel of one size and uh, 20 kilometers ahead, there's another tunnel which is of another size, you know, then, then the industry has to keep manufacturing uh, shutters and forms for things like that. So one of the mandates of this, this uh, committee is to try and get uniformity. You know, and also to push the quality and safety standards in the tunnel. We can't allow people in the country to now compromise on safety and quality of, of structures. That time has gone where we would say that it is important to have access and it's okay to not have, uh, not have it in the best possible quality and the best safety standards. So this, this uh, committee is trying to push that. 
it's trying to uh, get um, SOPs in, in place so that everybody tends to follow the same line and the panels that come up in the country are uniform in nature and they are, they are top quality, they are safe and they are in sync with international targets. That is interesting yeah. and extremely a large project in my opinion. Being in eighth grade myself, we have started talking about what we want to grow up. And I noticed that not many children wish to join the defense forces. Why do you think this is so? And how can we motivate more people to join the defense forces? You know, I, I, uh, uh, probably, you know, people, when, when they think of defense forces, they think of uh, only, you know, somebody who's standing on the border with a gun in his hand. That's not how it is. You know, for that person to be able to sit, stand there with a the gun in his hand, he needs a complete chain behind him, you know. And at all junctures of our career, we become part of that chain. So when we are younger, we probably that guy who, who's standing there, you know. But as you grow up in service within the military also, you start to get into the logistical, the technical, the administrative part of the army, which is also extremely important because finally that is the backup. Uh, probably... Every youngster needs to understand today that uh, military is, is, is a well-rounded career. It's, it's not only about uh, brawn, it is a lot about brains. And especially as officers, you know, it's finding your brains which, which see you through, you know. It's, it's how you plan your operations, uh, which has much more effect on, on, on success of an operation than the actual brawn during the operation. Yes, it is very important. But, but uh, you need thinking minds behind it also to plan things well. Similarly, in technology, you know, everywhere across the world, technology has traveled from the army to the CV street. You know, it's only in India, it, it happens that army ends up taking technology from the CV street, but now that's also changing. Slowly with how we are developing our, uh, you know, military and we're thinking of making things in India and uh, the army itself is trying to do a lot of stuff inside. You know, so there's scope for everyone. Now, uh, gender neutrality is coming in, you know, in all our academies, senate schools, girls and boys alike will come in. And that will that will bring in the right balance for the brain and the brawn. So I think that the youth of today has to see that that army is a fantastic career. And it will give you uh, food for everything. It will give you food for adventure. It will give you food for courage, for valor. And it will give you food for technology, logistics, management, administration, everything. So it's, it's, it's to me, uh, what I can tell you with 20 years behind me that it, it is uh, one of the most uh, rewarding uh, careers and lifestyles. I never knew such a lot about this. I think the main problem with us is that we don't know enough about the defense forces to actually determine what we can end up doing, except for the fact that we have to stand on the border with the gun. After, after this extremely informative answers to these questions, sir, is there any last message you wish to give to our viewers? I would, I would only like to tell them that uh, wherever you are in whatever field and whatever you do, as long as you do it with all your heart, you know, and as long as you do it with, with some more of patriotism yourself, it will help the country. So wherever you are, do your best. Yes, sir, definitely. If given your best effort, the best will come out. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for being here today. It was an honor having you here. Right, my pleasure.